We said at the end of the last video, if I want to take the derivative of two or more functions added or subtracted together, I just take the derivatives of all the little functions and add those derivatives together. We said also that that is not going to work if I want to take the derivative of a sum, uh, sorry, of a quotient or a product. I want to take the derivative of x squared. So this wasn't written in to your handout. You have to write in what I meant here. So we're going to find the derivative with respect to x of x squared. Remember this notation, d dx, means take the derivative of the thing that comes after. Well, this is easy now. You guys know the derivative of x squared. The 2 comes to the front. My new exponent is 1, which I don't bother writing, but it could, 2x to the first. Notice that is completely not the same if I take the derivative of the two things that multiply together to make x squared. The derivative with respect to x of x is 1. The derivative with respect to x of x is 1. I can multiply them together, and that makes 1. But I know the derivative with respect to x of x squared is supposed to be 2x. So this is to help you notice right off the bat that taking the derivative of a product is not the same as just taking the derivatives of the two factors and multiplying them together because these are not equal. Okay, so how do I take the derivative of a product? We said at the end of that last video, if I have, for example, two binomials multiplied together, I can just multiply them out and then I don't have to worry about a product rule. I can just rewrite my multiplication problem as a polynomial and take the derivative of each of the separate pieces and add those derivatives together. But if we have like um, trigonometric functions or exponential functions or logarithmic functions or some other functions that we haven't talked about yet even, we won't have a way to turn those multiplication problems into addition and subtraction problems. So we have to know the product rule. There's going to be a moment second semester where it's going to be time to start reviewing and I'll give you a practice problem and you'll have forgotten the product rule. We have to not forget the product rule. There's a place for it on your important facts paper and it just gets memorized. You have to know it backward and forward. If you want to take the derivative of a product, this is what we do. If the two things that are getting multiplied together, if I can call them D, if I can call them U and V, then the derivative with respect to X of U times V is U times the derivative of V plus V times the derivative of U. So you just make little opposite combinations of the factor and the derivative of the other thing, and the factor and the, the other factor and the derivative of the first thing. Um, so some people remember that as the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Um, you might also just remember sort of as a shorthand U V prime plus V U prime. However you remember it, memorize it. Um, it's fine, but I just need to know that when you take the derivative of two things multiplied together, your result should be a sum. It's the sum of the first factor multiplied by the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor multiplied by the derivative of the first factor. Now remember that both addition and multiplication are commutative, which means I can change their order. So these two parts of my sum, I could change their order. I can change the order that I write those multiplications in. There's lots of different ways to write this, and lots of different ways to compute it. But I need the first thing with the derivative of the second, I need the second term with the derivative of the first, and I need those two products to get added together. All right, so I'm gonna make you do this once, and then I won't make you do this again. Um, we're gonna find the derivative of a product first by multiplying it out, like it, the product of two binomials, like we did at the end of the last video, and then we're gonna try using the product rule just to make sure we get the same answer. So here we go. I could find the derivative of 3x cubed plus 4x squared times 2x to the fourth minus 5x by multiplying this out. So I'm going to just try that. It's going to take four multiplications. That would be 6x to the seventh minus 15x to the fourth plus 8x to the 6th minus 20x cubed. Um, it would have been better if I'd given that a label. That is still f of x. That's just, oops, f of x 
just multiplied out instead of written in factored form. So now I'm going to find f prime. I'm going to write it way down here just so I can find it later. f prime of x is going to equal, I'm going to bring 7 down to multiply the 6 to make 42 x to the 6th minus 15 times 4, same as 30 times 2, 60 x cubed plus 48 x to the 5th minus 60 x squared. Now I'm going to erase what I did up there. I'm going to try the whole problem over using the product rule instead and just double check that I get the same derivative I got here. All right, so when I said before that some people memorize the product rule as first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first, what I mean by first is the first of two factors. So if you could imagine where you could put a multiplication dot and that dot would split your problem into the two things that were getting multiplied together, those things are called factors. So pretty easy here, I imagine my dot in between my two sets of parentheses. So if this is f of x, f prime of x is going to equal the first factor, which is 3x cubed plus 4x squared, times the derivative of the second factor. And both of those things that I'm going to be multiplying together here need parentheses around them because they're binomials. Um, so the 4 is going to come to the front and multiply the 2 to make 8x cubed minus 5. Now I need the second times the derivative of the first. It's 2x to the 4th minus 5x times the derivative of the first. The 3 comes to the front to multiply the 3 to make 9x squared plus 8x. Now please know that if this is the free response section and all you were supposed to do was find f prime of x, you could stop here. No obligation to multiply this out. They definitely do not want to spend any large amount of time testing you on your algebra skills on this AP test or trying to test you on your calculus. If though this were a multiple choice question and you had to pick your answer from a bunch of multiple choice options and they weren't in this form, then you'd have to do your multiplying out. We're going to multiply out here just to confirm that we got the same result as when we um, use that other technique, this other method of finding our f prime. So I'm going to simplify f prime. I'm not going to do any calculus. I'm only using algebra. So my function still gets the same name, f prime. Um, so that's going to be 24x to the sixth minus 15x cubed plus 32x to the fifth minus 20x squared. It is not accepted notation to jump down to the second line, but there's no way I'm going to have enough room. So I'm going to do the second half here. This is going to be 18x to the sixth plus 16x to the fifth minus 45x cubed minus 40x squared. So f prime of x, I'm going to try to cancel, um, collect some of these like terms. Let's see. I got 24x to the 6th and 18x to the 6th is 34 and 8 is 42x to the 6th. That's a good sign. Um, I'll do my x cubed terms next. So minus 15x cubed minus 45x cubed makes minus 60x cubed. 48x to the fifth. So my x to the fifth terms, I have 32x to the fifth plus 16x to the fifth. Makes in fact 48x to the fifth. And then I have a minus 20x squared and minus 40x squared to make minus 60x squared. And I do, in fact, get the exact same result, the exact same f prime of x as when I multiplied first and then used the sum and difference rules to take the derivative. Final answer. All right, so your assignment here on this page is to try the rest of these. And we'll check them in class. All right, so it brings us to the quotient rule. If you want to take the derivative 
of a function that's made up of two smaller functions getting divided, please, number one, if at all possible, if that didn't, if that number you're, if that function you're dividing by is a constant, or the n numerator function is a constant and the denominator is just, you know, some x to some power, please try to consider rewriting using a negative exponent. Um, this is going to save so much time. If you can do that, please do. If you can't, you have to know the quotient rule anyway, because of all those other functions we won't be able to rewrite using exponents. So to take the derivative of two functions, call them u and v, that are divided, u divided by v, the derivative of u divided by v, I need, it's pretty big, you definitely have to know this one by heart, it goes on your important facts paper. So I'm going to make a giant fraction, so a big division problem, where my numerator is the first times the derivative of the second, so the, the top times the, no, the bottom times the derivative of the do, top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by that bottom function squared. So some people say if it's u divided by v, that the quotient rule is v u prime minus u v prime all over v squared. I'm gonna tell you right now what I learned in high school, what always worked for me. You are invited to try it if it helps you or just memorize it some other way, whatever way it was gonna work for you. I learned, if I think about the, the numerator and the denominator as high and low, then the quotient rule is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Um, so let's practice. I'm gonna move this up out of the way. I'm gonna keep low d high minus high d low all over low squared here for us. So I'm gonna take the derivative with respect to x of x over x squared plus one. Hi. I recognize that this is not the correct spelling of hi, so this is all, we're in abbreviation land here, mnemonic memory device land. Um, hi, it's the function above the fraction bar, right? In this case is x, low in this case is x squared plus 1. So I'm going to say that d dx of x over x squared plus 1 is... Ooh, I'm going to have to get me out of the way. The low function, which is x squared plus 1, times the derivative of the high function, the derivative of x is 1, minus the high function, which is x, times the derivative of the low function. So the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, all over the low function squared. So x squared plus 1 squared. I hope you were already thinking, look, there's subtraction followed by something that might have an addition or subtraction sign in it. I better distribute that subtraction. So I might leave my answer like this on the free response section where I have no obligation to simplify my answers. This is a multiple choice. I might find that the answer choices have the numerator simplified. I'd be surprised if the denominator was simplified. So I'm going to do this multiplying first, x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared. To get my final answer, I'm going to simplify the in the numerator, x squared plus 1, 1 squared in the denominator. x squared minus 2x squared is negative x squared plus 1. Final answer. That's d dx of x over x squared plus 1. All right, let's do... I'm going to leave this second example for you, and I want to come down to here some of these ones that you can practice on. Okay, so these examples down at this bottom of this fourth page, they're, they are supposed to feel purposefully vague. I want you to kind of be like, wait, where's all the numbers? There's not even any functions. I don't even know what the g function is or the f function is. You can still compute these derivatives, the derivatives you've been requested, 
the derivatives that have been requested using this value, these values. Um, so let's do this one together, and then I'll do the quotient rule one with you. I'll leave the other two for you to practice on. Okay. If f of x is 4 minus h of x, I've been asked to find f prime of 2. Big important idea. You cannot tell me f prime of 2 until you write me an expression for f prime of x. There's one exception which we'll talk about when you learn to find derivatives with your calculator. But in general, do not try to tell me what f prime of 2 is if you haven't written me an expression for f prime of x. Okay, so here's an expression for f prime of x. Well, the, if f of x is 4 minus h of x, the derivative of 4 is 0. So now I need the opposite of the derivative of h of x is called h prime of x. And f prime of 2 now that I have an expression for f prime of x, I can find f prime of 2 by replacing all the x's in that rule with 2's. So f prime of 2 is the opposite of h prime of 2. I've been told the h prime of, that h prime of 2 is 4. So f prime of 2 is negative 4. Final answer. All right, try letter D. If I know f of x is g of x over h of x, I'm supposed to find f prime of 2. Don't try to tell me f prime of 2 until you write me an expression for f prime of x prime of x is h of x times the derivative of g prime of x minus g of x times h prime of x all over that low function h of x squared. So f prime of 2 is h of 2 g prime of 2 minus g of 2 times h prime of 2 all over h of 2 squared. So f prime of 2 is going to be, I better move me out of the way, I can see I don't need that spot. Okay, here we go. Big fraction, h of 2 negative 1, g of 2, 3, oh, that was g prime of 2. All right, g prime of 2, negative 2, minus g of 2, times h prime of 2, all over h of 2, squared. So we'll use the order of operations to simplify that. That's 2 minus 12 over 1, which makes negative 10. Final answer.